Hi everyone, it's Liam here from Racing the Races. So we're going to do a couple of videos this week. Uh, the first one is going to be this one, which is all about some thoughts about different races um, over the last few weeks, uh, uh, for the last week, sorry. And I'm also going to do a video highlighting one, two, three, four, five, six horses that I think have been dropped in the handicap and can go close next time. Um, with regards to that, we had one of those yesterday. Champagne Well actually tweeted this out on the 12th of October. Champagne Well dropped five pound. I thought that was generous. What happened yesterday? Champagne Well came out and won at 20 to 1 or 25 on the exchanges. Um, fantastic uh, for that. Following on from that, we actually then also highlighted the three selections for the Melbourne Cup Spanish Mission, very elegant, and Master of Wine. A Master of Wine didn't quite get involved. But very elegant, won the race at 19.5. Spanish mission was third at 11.5. I like to do most of my uh, win only, so I only had the one winner there. I didn't get a each way on Spanish mission. So a couple of results there that were available on Twitter, or um, yeah, I tweeted them all out, to be honest. Um, so I am giving out free winners to people, um, and hopefully there's a few more going to come in these videos uh, today. So first of all, I want to talk about the... Uh, 213 race at Utoxa a few days ago. It was a mare's maiden hurdle, and it was won in very good style by Lady Adair, making it two from two now for Harry Fry. Now, why I think you need to be very, um, you need to watch out for Lady Adair is this race generally works out quite well. Previous winners or runners in this race include Le Bagawa, obviously very good mare. Dame de Company went on to win a Coral Cup. Um, Molly Ollie's Wishes won at the weekend in a listed race. And Panic Attack. A Panic Attack we highlighted a few weeks ago. Um, finished fourth in a attempt qualifier. Just keep out for, keep an eye out for Panic Attack. Remember, it only went off 10 to 1 for a champion bumper. Um, so keep an eye out for her. So Lady Adair, I think, is, is worth keeping an eye out for going forward. Um, I think the race will work out well particularly for Lady Adair, um, and think she could be uh, well above average. The next race is a very similar type of race, and it's it was won by Paul Ticello, um, making his debut for, interesting, both of those were making their stable debuts. Uh, this one for Gary Moore. Um, I'd come over from France and won the race. Let me just turn my phone down so we're not interrupted. Um, one for Gary Moore. Now, Previous winners of this race include Duffelcoat, um, Malaya, So Royale, Langadan. There's some good names there. That, I think there's two Coral Cup win um, two Imperial Cup winners there. Obviously, So Royale's won over half a million in prize money now, I believe. Um, fantastic achievement that is. Um, and Duffelcoat obviously looked quite good last year. So keep an eye on Porticello uh, going forward. Um, I think it was a very good performance, and I think um, I think he'll improve the run. I think he'll he'll be. I hate getting involved in juveniles so early in the season, but this will turn up in the triumph hurdle, Porticello for for me. I don't think um, is he on the same level as Goshen? Not yet. Could it be? Possibly. Um, we'll find out in the next few months. But I think this will be one that. Although it's early on in the season, it will end up in the um, triumph hurdle. Moving on to Saturday, we had a, one of our horses to follow this season, Solo. Ran an absolute crack of a race. He went 1.08 in run in the run before finishing second to Nassalam, uh, our top-rated horse. Now, Nassalam is that four-year-old over fences, um, first time up over fences, that angle generally works. You can see Nassalam was very, very consistent last year. He's a very good horse. Um, I think Solo, he's gone up four pounds for finishing second, but I wouldn't be too um, put off by Solo next time. I think that experience, I think Nassalam is better than uh, the mark that he ran off as well. I think four and five pounds for both of them won't be enough to stop them next time. I will talk about something else from that race in the next video. The 2.45 was won by Amula Gold. Did you see the race? 
Monchenko went 1.01 in the run. Looked like he'd got it one jump in the last. Amula Gold wasn't even in picture. And I know the pictures on TV are terrible sometimes. He's finished so strongly. He always does. And they've obviously gone an absolute uh, mad gallop here. Um, and it's just suited Amula Gold. But that was amazing to watch. We'd previously had Nassalam and Solo battling it out. This time we saw Amula Gold, Justin Abb, Monster Leco. Um, and there were some other good races throughout the day. The 320, the London Gold Cup, was won by Larry. Similar sort of effort here. He came from a long way back um, to win and actually won, um, I think her username is Simply Annie on Twitter, won her two weeks of ratings for picking the winner. Um, she was actually the only person who picked the winner in the race. Um, so well done to her. Moving on to the 305 at Weatherby. Um, the Charlie Hall Chase was won by Fuso Raffles, our top rated, beating our horse to follow, Kitty's Light, with obviously Shan Bleu falling, having traded 104 in the run. He was going to win. It's been announced today that he won't be seen until the spring. Um, I think he's just sustained a little injury falling. It was quite a heavy fall, but thankfully he's OK and he's going to um, run in the spring, hopefully. The handicapper had a difficult decision there. Does he rate it on Shambler? Does he rate it on Fusa Raffles? Does he rate it on those behind? And he's actually rated it on those behind. So he suggested that I think Topfield Ben dropped five pounds for finishing fifth, but a long way behind. Surname dropped six. Fusa Raffles and Kitty's Light both stayed on the same mark. They both stay on the same mark. So I would be very keen for both of them to run in handicaps next time. Fusa Raffles has an entry in the Paddy Power. Uh, handicap chase at Cheltenham. I think that'll suit him perfectly. Whilst Kitty's Light could be seen in the Hennessy uh, or the Labrick Trophy. Um, I'd, I'd like to see him in the Welsh National, to be honest, um, but we'll see if he turns up there. But definitely, I think now they've got a bit of prize money, they've got a freebie prize money, basically. You know, they get some prize money and they don't go up in the handicap. Um, now I would drop them back into a handicap and try and win a handicap before going back into graded company. At Down Royal, Labrook's champion chase. What a race this was. This was fantastic. Frodon led for most of the way, and then about two out, Minello Indo was trying, trying to sneak up the inside. Delta Work was getting closer. Galvin was coming around the outside. It looked, I thought they were both going to sweep on past Minello Indo and Frodo, uh, Galvin, sweep on past Frodon. But he just seemed to, he, I think he saw the horse's Come towards him and he's like, I can go again. Brian, had kicked him on again and, and he battled so strongly to, to win. Galvin did have the fitness edge, um, having had a recent run. And Paul Nichols did say this was Frodon's Gold Cup. So I wouldn't be too disappointed with Manella Indo, especially if you're on Manella Indo to go back for the Gold Cup. Um, he ran well for a long way. Uh, as I said, Galvin had the fitness. Frodon was prepped and primed for this race. Finishing third behind them, having travelled quite nicely for most of the way, I'm sure they'll be very happy with that. With They'll have bigger targets in mind. The 325 at Down Royal was won by Envoy Len. Um, he beat nothing. He beat absolutely nothing. And it was great to see him back. I'm hoping he goes for a Gold Cup. I know this is a significant step up in trip, but I'm hoping we see Envoy Lynn in the Gold Cup, Alaho in the Ryanair and whatever else the Chibli Park want to run in other races. They could run Abu Tar in the Gold Cup again, obviously, finish second uh, this year, um, but I'm hoping they step Envoy Lynn up for the Gold Cup. So that's it. They're just under 10 minutes this time. I've spoken about Champagne World being a 20 to 1 winner for us, and we also had the 19.5, very elegant in the Melbourne Cup. The next video we'll be talking about horses that I think are handicapped um, to run big races. I think I've got uh, one for Ascot, one for Warwick, one for Chepstow um, and one, one for Kempton for sure in the list that I can see on my right hand side. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Um, but as I said, if you want to take anything from the first couple of races here, definitely these winners, Lady Adair and Porticello, I think they'll both be uh, well above average.